Hello my soccer universe. Starting with this Wednesday we get a double round of Europa League action to start the new Europa League season in a revamped format. The same format that we have for the Champions League, meaning we have a big league phase and every team in the Europa League has eight opponents for at home, four away from home, which is absolutely new and what we saw from the Champions League. I would expect that this first set of matches probably not all that exciting because, you know, we have to feel ourselves in the competition. We don't quite know yet what it all means. Still, I really think it elevates the competition. We also have that only through qualification could teams from the Champions League fall into the Europa League. We don't have any relegation from the Champions League to the Europa League after the league phase, which I think elevates the Europa League even more. It also means that the 36 teams that we have, one of those will win this trophy. But who will it be? There are also quite some big names in there, I gotta say. We have the team I'm wearing, Roma. We have, of course, one of the biggest names in world football in Manchester United up there. We also have Ajax in there, so pretty big names. We also have a former Europa League winner in Eintracht Frankfurt. And also Spurs have won the UEFA Cup before, so quite interesting. And most interesting enough, the final will be played in Bilbao. And Bilbao is in the competition as well. And they, of course, will do everything to win that final and at home. But I would think that Real Sociedad would love to win that final also in Bilbao. But their season didn't start all that well. So that is all to be seen. In this video, we're going to talk about the draw. We're going to talk about who are the favorites. We look at the first set of fixtures. But before that, we need to talk about the qualification rounds. Well, the qualifying campaign is all the only option for me to talk about Lusk in this competition. Sadly enough, we didn't make it, but hey, so be it. Let's go round by round. Not much notable from round one. You see the results here. Given that they have been in the Champions League not too long ago, I think that Sheriff only making it on penalties against Zira from Azerbaijan is probably the most outstanding result there. The second qualifying round was already a little bit more eventful because it featured a few big names. We had, for instance, Praga and they are completely going over Makavi Petar Tikva. We also had Rapsonspor scraping by Ruzhan Berok from Slovakia. Panathinaikos over Potev Plovdiv was a tight first leg, second leg they completely destroyed the Bulgarian side. We had Ajax making it past Vojvodina on a 4-1 aggregate goal line and we had Rapid Vienna having a real good showing, especially in the second leg against Wisla Krakow. Yes, Wisla is only now in the second division, but they're the Polish Cup winners after all and yes, maybe they had a little bit trouble in the first leg, second leg. They were leading 5-0 at the halftime break. Break. And that against any opponent is a remarkable result. The third qualifying round saw a few more remarkable results. Again, Rapid showing their real good form that early in the season by beating Traps with 3 0 on aggregate. It was every bit of 3 0. This was fully deserved. The away win should have been already more than a 1 0 potentially. And then at home, they created so many chances. Traps as well was not present. It was a real good showing by Rapid. And I'm saying this, although. They're not my favorite team from Austria, let's put it that way. However, the outstanding fixture was definitely Ajax against Panathinaikos. Yes, this was a rematch of the 71 European Cup final. There was also a 96 uh, Champions League semi final between those two teams. So, those were two big names meeting. Ajax won the away leg. Panathinaikos scored very late in the return leg to take this game to overtime. But it's not overtime that we're talking about. We have to talk about the epic, epic penalty shootout. 17 penalties each. Panathinaikos going first through all 11 players and they had to go through another six. And what's even crazier is that Panathinaikos missed the last two and then Brobe had actually the chance to win it already for Ajax after the only 16th penalty. However, he missed his second penalty in that shootout. In the end, it's Guy who wins it for Ajax, an absolutely mad shootout. Something for the ages. And I don't want to see the penalty spot after that one. I think they should make a rule that after 11 shooters, you switch to the other side. And then Lusk entered in the qualifying playoff. And please let me tell you from a balcony at a hotel in Bulgaria how that went. Fortunately, Lusk only managed a 1-1 draw yesterday evening against our Bucharest at home, or FCSB as we should call them. And yeah, maybe on balance it was the right result, but I feel it more like an opportunity loss because for 45 minutes you really dominated them. You scored one beautiful goal through Tau after a brilliant assist by Schul and the, the whole build-up play was absolutely gorgeous. But he also missed a few big chances, especially Uzo did. And then you can see just before halftime a very avoidable goal. And then second half a whole lot of nothing until very late on Berisha hit the crossbar and you 
allowed FCSB to get back into the game a few times. Fortunately, they are not good enough as well to take care of those big opportunities that were opened up for Lusk. Also, Schul, broken nose, so captain out. And in the warm-up, Toby Laval also injured himself. So yeah, kind of a blah result overall. It was not meant to happen for my dear Lusk. Yes, it was a makeshift squad, many injuries already, and it did not help that Sasha Horvath also had to come off injured. I really hope he can play on the weekend, so the start of the season continues to be a bad one. And yes, in the first half, you were really the better team. You had your opportunities, especially Taui. You need to go for it yourself or play a better pass to Ljubicic, but also Tiers had a good header. Lusk probably should have scored that goal in the first half. Second half, FCSB got better and probably had a little bit more of the game still you had the big chance to tower in the 90th minute where you just have to lob the goalkeeper but you were a little bit more on the back foot Sears had to clear it off the line in the end Olaru makes a run deep in stoppage time and the Yanks hit above 700 from a very acute angle into the net gut punch absolute gut punch this one and it's by no means consolation because I was hoping that they will make it that Rapids got eliminated by Braga in similarly heartbreaking fashion, having a 2 0 lead and then ending 2 2. This area at loss to FCSB was a real gut punch because you could see that we are the better team overall. However, there is some creativity at FCSB and you let them in the game and this continued a very negative spiral that is still going on at the time of this video. It also led to the sacking of coach Darosh. On the other side, I mentioned in the video, Rapid got eliminated by Braga, but this was a much, 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 much closer affair. They took an early lead in Braga, probably should have doubled it. They lose it then because there was a red card to Grugic in the return leg. Braga showed their class, but Rapid had a 2-0 lead and then gave it away in short succession late in the game. So with a little bit of luck, Rapid could have qualified as well. I definitely think that both Austrian teams probably should have qualified for the Europa League. On the flip side, Conference League, you've got easier opponents. Maybe you make more points for the coefficient, which is also important. Other than that, Ajax make it relatively easy over Polish champions Jagiellonia. We have Besiktas over Lugano, after Lugano got already ousted by Fenerbahce in the Champions League qualification. There was a penalty shoot between Ferenc Varsh and Banja Luka that the Hungarian champions won, and Pauk relatively easy over Shamrock Rovers after they got eliminated in heartbreaking fashion from the Champions League. So after this qualification round, we had the following 36 teams qualified and put into the four different pots. And a little bit like the Champions League, but maybe even more severely so, I found the pots rather uneven. Yes, I think pot one is overall okay, although one may argue about potentially Rangers or Slavia in there, but they have earned a spot up there by having really good performances in Europe as of late. But starting with pot 2, 3 and 4, I think this is relatively uneven. I mean, look in pot 4, we have Athletic Club in there, who holds the final at home and are a top side in Spain. We have Hoffenheim in there, a good team from Germany, and you know, Nice and so on, not that bad. If you look at pot 3, there are quite some good teams in there, but then there's also Maccabi Tel Aviv and Ferenc Varos, who have not really shown how good they can be. Pot 3 I also find rather uneven overall. Every team plays two opponents from each pot. It's very easy to get a bad draw, especially if you get Athletic Club as your opponent from pot four. And so it all panned out. So here are the opponents for pots one and pot two. And just look in the pot four column. Wherever there's Athletic Club, you see there is a red bar, which means this was a tough draw. A green bar means you had got a relatively easy opponents, a red bar means you got tougher opponents than expected. And yes, for instance, if I look at Roma, that's a hell of a draw with potentially only Elfsborg and maybe Dynamo Kiev not being that strong, but you play against Athletic Club in there. The team that got the easiest draw are reigning Conference League champions Olympiakos. They got a relatively good one. On the negative side, Fenerbahce, for instance, got hammered. I look at Rangers that also did not get an all too good draw for them. And again, the same caveat applies. You know, if you want to win the competition, you probably hope that you get easy opponents. However, if you're a newbie in there and this is just your glory round through a Europa League, you probably want to have tough opponents. So, you know, don't see this as positive or negative necessarily. In pot three, Galatasaray also got relatively off easy. I think Elfsburg and RFS do that for you. And then in pot four, we have two real outliers, especially Elfsburg got a hell of a draw, but also Twente. Probably quite attractive, but it will be difficult to 
at once. Based on this draw, I ran 10,000 simulations and let's see how what the league table is expected to look like after this one and we see the two English Giants should float up top and again these are the ratings taken right after the draw. So Real Sociedad in third place rides relatively high. They have taken a little bit of a nose dive because their results at the beginning of the season did not pan out that well. But we see Real Sociedad got a relatively good draw, uh, Roma, Athletic Club and so on dropped a little bit down but it's the two english giants of course that should run through that competition if they take it seriously this is always the question and i would argue for both of these teams they should take the competition seriously it's not only a pathway into the champions league but i think for both teams and probably for spurs a tad more than for united a title is really really necessary i can very well see united winning this one as well and ten Hag claiming a third trophy in three seasons when in the premier league it didn't work all that well so directly into the round of 16 should be Spurs, United, Roma, Athletic, Club, Porto, Galatasaray und, and Eintracht. But we also have then the next eight, Lazio, Nice, Olympiakos, Lyon, Ajax, Fenerbahce, Hoffenheim and Slavia, Pauk, Braga, Anderlecht mit Jülern, Besiktas, AZ, Union saint Julius, and Pilsen. Those are the eight teams that will be unseated in the draw for the playoff. On the bottom, yeah, we see quite some interesting teams. Ludogorets, FCSB, still hurts, Elfsborg and of course RFS from Latvia, but that is to be expected. Looking at the overall favorites, it paints a very similar picture. It's Spurs ahead of United, of course, but you know, Roma has been a little bit of a mess. They are a step behind. There's a I would say Roma, Real Sociedad, Porto and Athletic Club are potentially teams that could challenge if the English teams don't take the competition seriously. I think everyone else is really an outside shot, I gotta say. I said it, we have an exclusive Europa League week and match day one has quite a few interesting results. We have a duel of the Turkish against the Greek champions, Galatasaray against Pauk. I think fireworks. I would expect there. United start at home against Twente, should be an easy win, but then you never know. I would expect that Nice against Real Sociedad to be a relatively even matchup. On Thursday, it's all about Roma against Athletic Club. That I think is a pretty big matchup and I would actually expect Athletic Club to win that one, especially in the form that Roma are in currently. We have also Olympiacos taking on Lyon. That I think could be an interesting one and then Spurs open at home to Karabakh should be a win and let's see how many Rangers fans travel to Malmö. I would expect a proper invasion there. In the early kickoff also Fenerbahce against Union saint gilles I think they met last year in the Conference League if I'm not. <music> So those were my thoughts on the Europa League. I think this will be a pretty interesting competition overall. I think there are quite some big names in there that will keep the interest of the fans. Yes, it's not the Champions League, but it's a much more level competition and you have your big names in there that make it definitely interesting as well. I'm curious how this Europa League group stage will pan out. I will do review videos of course after every round and throughout the seasons and of course you also get some short videos. In any case give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video, subscribe to my channel if you want to see more videos like these and I will talk to you soon about more things in my soccer universe. Bye! Hey there! I really hope you enjoyed this video and if you did here are some videos and playlists that you may enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel and hit the little bell icon so you get notified whenever something happens in my soccer universe. And with that, have a wonderful day. Bye!